your process for for buying trailers? One, where do you get them? Two, and how do you distinguish what's going to be for sale, what's going to be for lease? So our plan, so what we do is we source trailers. We, we actually figure out what we're going to do on the new trailer side, and we put that um, budget together and those numbers together for for new trailers and we send that over to Fruhoff yep. uh, on an annual basis and um, you know their production that last year wasn't able to really keep everybody needed trailers last year so um, you know they had they were maxed out and they told us exactly how many we could get which was probably a couple hundred fewer than what we requested um, so we source all of our new trailers from Fruhoff. We will do some more, uh, new drive vans and new chassis. We will do some one off type purchases from other dealers every now and then if they have equipment that we need uh, that's outside of what Fruhoff can manufacture. Um, but, you know, 99.9% .9 of our new trailers come from Fruhoff. From Fruhoff. Our used trailers, they normally come from brokers. Um, that we've been working with forever. And most of those are guys that I worked with that, you know, my G capital days who are still in the business and they're sourcing trailers. Um, we also buy from other dealers, which we normally don't do that much of because, you know, they're priced a lot higher. We at one point bought from auctions, but we don't do that anymore because, you know, when things were at, when pricing was at an all time high and demand was, you know, at its peak, um, those trailers were going for more than market-based prices at the auctions. So we, 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 we cut that out of our sourcing strategy. So now we're buying primarily from, and, and we've always bought from trucking companies, from end users. Okay. Now we're buying more trailers from more people that are going out of business than we ever have before. So we're really pushing that side of the business, um, you know, the, the equipment purchase side, because we know that there's still a lot of these one to five truck guys that they just don't want to be in the business anymore. They can't afford to be in the business anymore. Um, and they're electing to sell their equipment and go into work for, um, for trucking yeah. companies yeah. or, you know, just through attrition, they're just leaving the, 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 the industry. And so we've done this year, we've bought, God, well, I guess I should say since December, uh, we've probably bought 50 to 60 percent of our used trailers from guys that are that are getting out of the business. Wow. And that works very well for us, too, and for the customer, because we can you know, pay them immediately. You know, we go and inspect the equipment wherever it is. If it's not in Houston or the Houston area, we'll find a partner of some we have partners that we've dealt with all over the country through our relationships, uh, through the National Trailer Dealer Association. We use um, uh, this app that we've we've made great relationships through uh, um, Truck Down, where we use miscellaneous vendors. And, and, and normally we keep those relationships going, um, you know, because there's always going to be a need in those areas. So we get those guys to inspect equipment for us. And then at that point, uh, you know, they send us back pictures and and uh, uh, specs on the equipment and assessment. And then, you know, we negotiate the price. And and at that point, we um, our logistics guys, they actually move the equipment down uh, from uh, from wherever they are down into Houston. So, um, you know, that's, you know, kind of where we source the trailers. And uh, um, I'm trying to remember the second part of your question. Uh, I think that I think yeah. you answered everything. Okay. How, how do you evaluate the trailer? So I know you said somebody's doing the inspections, they're doing the sourcing. So I guess there's like a that inspector will give you the value of the trailer based on age and wear and tear, and so forth. Well, we have a system internally that we use for the valuation, but when but what before we make an offer, all that comes into play. You know, we look at the photographs, we look at the condition of the equipment. And uh, and then we make a, an offer. And uh, and at that point, we know what our ceiling is. We know what our floor is. And, you know, we try to buy somewhere in the in the middle. But our strategy for acquisition, equipment acquisition, we are actually looking at, um, you know, this year, the bulk of the trailers that we're going to buy are still going to be drive ins. But now that we've added this intermodal chassis line, we are um, looking at. 
Uh, well, I actually, actually just did a, like a five city port tour uh, over the last couple of weeks. And uh, we're really going to be expanding our business into, you know, some of the, the Gulf port areas, mm -hmm. um, New Orleans, uh, Mobile, Alabama, Jacksonville, Florida, uh, and then up, uh, up the Atlantic into Savannah, Georgia and um, and Charleston, South Carolina. So, you know, those are, especially that, you know, Charleston and, and Savannah area, those areas rather, those are very, very vibrant, you know, markets in addition to Houston. Uh, there's just so much business here that, um, you know, we're gonna be very strategic about how we enter into those, those other markets. We're gonna do it, you know, it's not gonna really be, um, you know, with personnel, it's just gonna really be asset base. Um, and, you know, we'll have equipment there uh, through third party agreements. But, um, you know, those are the areas where we see major growth for our business. So right now, the strategy is really to, um, you know, bring and build our lease business, our rental business, primarily our long term lease business, because the majority of these these chassis and uh, the new drive ins that we bring on board, they're going to be going on 36 to 60 month leases, which helps us to build um, you know, the, the equity in our business. And, um, you know, again, in that, that five-year plan, um, you know, we're actually matching up the financing with the lease term. So by the time we get that equipment back, it's paid off. Mm -hmm. And from that point forward, it's just all cash flow. And uh, all of our neat leases, rather, are net maintenance leases. So, you know, we want to build a, a, a lease fleet, um, get it up to pretty close to about a thousand trailers, and then just continue to sell, you know, five to 800 trailers a year. And that gives us a very, very, very solid business. Got it. Are, <clears throat> are the lease trailers all brand new? Are they newer trailers or what's like the, the range on age for them? Yeah, so all of the chassis are brand new. And okay. I say all of them. We were able, a customer of ours sold us uh, a pretty sizable group of chassis that are lightweight chassis, 2018, 2019 models. So, you know, two, three years old. Uh, the dry vans, we're not putting any new dry vans into our, our rental fleet. We're, we're actually going to be focusing on uh, our local dray business and in those respective port cities, we feel that we can marry up the intermodal business to the local dray business and sort of comp one complements the other. So those are going to be trailers that range from it's like 10 year old trailers uh, for the most part, because here, here in the Houston market, we don't get much more for a brand new trailer than we get for a 10 year old trailer. Gotcha. So it's like, you know, why don't why would we why do we need to spend um, you know, sixty thousand dollars to make a few pennies more than we would make on a trailer where we spend, you know, twenty thousand dollars. Right. So, um, you know, that's the growth strategy um, for for the lease fleet. And then on the used trailers, we're just, you know, whatever we can sell, um, you know, as far as the year range. Um, you know, we don't really want to buy anything older than, you know. 2004 or so because most of our a lot of our customers are um you know local in scope or regional in scope and a new trailer does them no more good again than the 10 year old trailer so um you know we just feel like that's the best bet for our buck right now got it what are your typical margins on a on a used trailer sale uh on a sale um we normally try to get anywhere from eight to ten percent okay uh, on the spread on got that it. equipment you know the the, the 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 travesty in our business is that the government makes more money than we do on the trailer. <laughs> you know, they get an automatic at 12 percent right off the top. Mm. Um, and, you know, we, and we pay, you know, and like most dealers, I guess, that sell new trailers, the FET numbers are just insane. But, you know, to, to cut those checks to the to the IRS every quarter, and you're seeing that, man, those checks are, are bigger than what we're cutting for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're, we're anywhere between eight and 10%. Got it. Who, who is your ideal customer? Um, so for us, our, 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 our range, or at least as, as, it, as what we publish, is customers that are um, one to you know, $100 million in sales. So what that actually transitions into for us is customers that are, um, you know, anywhere from one to, you know, 50, 60 trucks. And the, so when I answer that question, that's sort of, you know, what we really look for. The ideal customer is sort of like the, you know, 18 to 25 truck guy uh, that's more regional in scope, um, you know, 
two to three million dollars a year in revenue and, uh, you know, then running, you know, a, a, a solid fleet of, you know, dry vans um, and, and, and intermodal chassis. So that's the ideal customer. Um, because, And I say ideal primarily because we have everything that we need to to one to a service that customer. And then second, those customers historically are a lot more seasoned, um, you know, in how they run their business. And they really know you can you can really ask those questions that make us feel like we're really a partner with those companies. And right. when I say those questions, I mean, you know, like, why are you guys renting this equipment or leasing this equipment? You know, what are you actually using it for? And then we can come in there and, and you know, with somewhat of a consultative approach and say, you know, hey, you know, what do you are, how's the depreciation going to affect your business if you lease versus buy? Um, you know, what are your what's your 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 maintenance budget going to look like, you know, in a lease versus buy situation? You know, how's your capital comfort, comfort uh, capital conservation going to look like, you know, if you're going to lease this equipment or buy? So an analysis of all those tangible things make more sense to companies in that Range. fleet range yeah. or revenue range than they do for a guy that's running, you know, one or two trucks. And and that's been a great business for us. Um, we're just trying to figure out how we can be more of a benefit from a business perspective with the one or two truck guy. They they need a trailer, but, you know, they need a trailer because, you know, they've got to go and haul some freight. And, you know, this is their business. This is basically their lifeline. This is how they pay their bills for their business and their personal lives. Not like, you know, our businesses don't do that, but without that truck or two trucks, they're just not gonna be able to, you know, achieve those objectives in their lives. Right. And so the, all the, those guys are like humping all day long. They're not like analyzing their books. Um, and I, I'm not all of them. I'm not trying to categorize yeah, yeah, them all in sure. the group. I get it. I'm just saying that, you know, it's a different animal, not unlike, a company that's doing, you know, 50 million in revenues versus a company that's doing 500 million in revenues. It's a different ball game. Right. So uh, but we are working diligently, even though that's been our 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 our, um, our bread and butter. We have got to figure out how to become more in tuned, more of a value partner with the one to five truck guys as we are with the you know 18 to 25 truck guys.